welcome to GardenWise Adventures. My name is Malie and today we're going to do three different videos. This is a beautiful Saturday and I have a couple of different projects I'm going to do and I wanted to do a video of all of them. So the first thing that I wanted to do is plant a few more fall vegetables that can carry on into the winter and I also wanted to give you a quick update on my garden. It's near the end of the season but things are still pumping out. Let's show you what I'm growing. Now the first thing I wanted to show you are my tomatoes. I planted these tomatoes really early. I'm in Utah zone 6 slash 7. Usually we should, you should not plant tomatoes here until Mother's Day. But I needed to get these out of my grow room and ended up planting them out here under cover under both fleece and uh, the plastic on this, on this low hoop house. And I planted them out near the beginning of April and was really prepared for them to not do well, but they have pumped out the tomatoes. I have not had any issue with blossom end rot except for a couple of them, just a couple of tomatoes. And what we have here is we have some mushroom basket. There it is right there. We have some mushroom basket. We have some Amish paste. This one's an Amish paste. Got some more Amish paste ripening back here. I just did a big harvest. And then way back here, we've got some San Marzano. And they have produced tons and tons of tomatoes. Now we have an interloper. Let me show you that one back here. I had thought I planted a sun sugar tomato. The, the packet said sun sugar. These are definitely not sun sugar, but these have been pumping out absolute amazing cherry tomatoes. Well, okay. I won't say they have an amazing flavor. They have good flavor, they're not amazing, but they've been pumping out tons of them. And I've just been eating them fresh and drying them, dehydrating them. Now these right here obviously are not tomatoes. These are from my passion vine, which is right next door, which is now producing tons of fruit. I think last time I counted there were 12 of them, but there are flowers everywhere and I know there's a fruit in here somewhere, I just can't find it. But the flowers are gorgeous. The flowers are gorgeous and they smell beautiful too. Over here is an out of control pepita squash. Well, I think there's three plants here. They're producing tons of fruit. I checked for squash bugs four times, found squash bugs each time, and then decided I didn't have the time or energy to go after them anymore. But for some reason, either this plant has fended them off or they decided to leave it alone. But we have tons of the pepita squash in here. There's a huge one back here. You can kind of get a sense of the size. This is a Lady Godiva and we are going to be getting pepita squash. There's more here. And some more down there, just about right. So I'm really excited about these and excited about the size of them. The watermelons here, now this is the end of September. These were planted, I think it was the beginning of June or the end of May. And they just have not liked it as much as the squash has. So we'll be trying these watermelons again next year in a different spot. But these are what were called the ancient watermelons from Baker Creek and just didn't do as well as I'd hoped. Now this is definitely the end of season for my lower garden area. We've had a bunch of kale and Swiss chard over here that did it really well. I gave up and allowed my, my pink celery, my Chinese pink celery, to go to seed. Not that much of a celery eater, so that was fun. My poor tomatillos got shaded out, but we do have some fruit on them. They haven't filled out their husks yet, so they're not ready, but there'll be a few of them. We'll have to put the tomatillos somewhere else next year where they can actually get some sun. These are my black sea man tomatoes plus a sun sugar on the other end. And they've been pumping out tomatoes too. I just did a harvest so none of them are really quite ripe yet. The squash bed is very, pretty much done. I pulled out the zucchini and I just, I probably had 30 zucchinis off that one plant. My yellow squash didn't do as well this year. 
and I wasn't impressed with the center cut squash as a fresh eating squash. So we're going to let it ripen and see how it is as a winter squash. We've got tons and tons of spaghetti squash all over the place. They're still not quite ripe yet, waiting for the outside skin to harden, and then we'll harvest those. And off two plants, we only got two butternut squash, these two right here, but at least we got them. These are my Jetstar tomatoes. We have one Kentucky beefsteak that somehow snuck in. And then these yellow ones right here were supposed to be the sun sugar. So we're supposed to be the sun gold. So the sun gold turned into a red one and then it also had these yellow ones in it. So that seed packet was a mixed packet of wrong tomatoes. These also, the flavor is okay, but I've been dehydrating them them and they've been good dehydrated. We have one little topaz melon that's growing in this sweet potato bed and I'm waiting for that to ripen and I'll save the seeds from that. My daughter has one with several other uh, fruit on it but I've been waiting for years to be able to produce this topaz melon. It's a melon that was grown by the Japanese at the internment camps here in Utah And uh, as my ex-husband, his family was lived in Delta near the internment camps and they're Japanese. They were not interned, but I really wanted this as a heritage plant for my kids. Sweet potato bed is doing really well. Can't wait for the harvest this year to see how it does. We'll harvest this probably the end of September. We'll see how it goes. We've got to harvest it before the first heavy frost. Just don't know when that's going to happen this year. This is going to be my next video. This is a straw bale garden. It's decomposed quite a bit, but we'll talk a little bit about that in my next video. And we're going to be harvesting potatoes out of here. I already have been harvesting potatoes and they've been really good. This is my upper garden. It's been a very, very productive year. These are my early fall veggies. I planted these uh, the middle of July. So we've got chijimisai some bro broccoli rob type plants. They're the yadfa, vadya. I never pronounce it correctly. And then we've got some cauliflower in the back. We've got yellow and purple. So they're doing well and they should be able to finish producing by the time we have uh, the freezes set in. We've got more butternut squash. These weren't heavy producers this year either. We've got a couple of them. We've got about four in this bed. Plus we have some orange watermelon that I just threw in here. So we've got a watermelon over here. We've got a larger one over here. We've got some squash starting over there. And then one that's nearly right there. Another one over here and then one at the end. So this has been a pretty productive bed. It's been a lot of fun to watch it. These are my cucumbers that I planted at the end of July. So that they've been in ground for probably about six weeks, five weeks, and I've already harvested a full grocery bag out of here. We use these to make pickles. These are the Market More cucumbers and they are just really, really happy and doing well along with the Swiss chard that is really grasshopper eaten right now. Did a sweet pepper harvesting video. I've already filmed the hot pepper harvesting video and we're going to put that up a little bit later. This is where I planted carrots. The seeds have started to sprout. There were a lot more of them. I think they're just getting mowed down by the grasshoppers. I'm not seeing hardly any anymore, which really makes me upset. So we may have to put something else in here. The grasshoppers are eating the, the green onions that I put in here too. So boo grasshoppers. There's a ton of them this year, but we do have a few carrots. Maybe we'll get a few. More peppers. More peppers. I'll link the sweet pepper harvesting video up above. And like I said, we're going to have the hot pepper harvesting video here shortly. 
Now we had to cover this bed because the grasshoppers were mowing it down, but we've got some cabbage in here. We've got some more cauliflower. We've got some collards. And then in the back we have chijimisai that was eaten down by the grasshoppers. So hopefully with the covering over the top of it, we can protect it enough to actually get a harvest. Now this last bed is the one that I'm going to be working on. I just harvested my miserably tiny beets. I never get large beets, but I harvested them. There was enough that I'm going to be able to pickle some beets. We pl actually planted, you know, from Lambert Growers, I purchased some of their pea seedlings. The grasshoppers have not eaten those yet. I don't think they've discovered the green onions that I put up here either. But let me show you what we're going to plant. So since the days are getting cooler and it's September and they're just going to continue to get cooler, we're going to plant some arugula and some lettuce. And for a friend, I started some bok choy. They were his seeds. He said I could use some. Grasshoppers have already found them. They've just been out for like 15 minutes, so I don't know how long these are going to last. But we're going to plant some bok choy and see how well they do. Now I've already amended the beds with some nitrogen fertilizer. We're going to hold off on compost until the until next spring. We've already added a ton of compost this year. And the only thing my beds are really lacking right now is nitrogen. Now the reason that I am focusing on the plants that I'm focusing on, the brassicas, the peas, the lettuce, the arugula, is because they can take the shorter days, they can take the cooler nighttime temperatures, and as the season cools off and we head towards our frosts and freezes, they can tolerate some frosts and freezes. My first frost date is usually the middle of October, but we can see them in September sometimes. So I have anywhere from, I'd say, maybe 20 days to 40 days until the first frost. These mature in a short amount of time. We can harvest them young and they can take those frosts. So let me show you how I'm going to plant these. Now bok choy does not take a lot of time to grow. I started these by seed probably about four weeks ago. Maybe it was even a little bit less. Maybe it was about three weeks ago and they've already gotten to a good size. So these should grow really, really well. We'll just need to make sure to keep them well watered. We'll just need to make sure to keep them well watered until they get established. Well, always water them, but uh, we'll need to pay attention while they're young. Now that the bok choy is planted, I'm going to plant some of these seeds. We've got some pelleted seeds here, and I'm just going to broadcast sow them, push a little bit of the dirt aside, broadcast them all over, and use them as cut and come again. Now I'm going to plant these really thick because they are older seeds, and I think the germination rate is suffering on them a little bit. And then I will just use these as a cut and come again plant, which means when they come up, I'm not going to have individual plants. I will just harvest them with scissors. So this was a mix. It's called Cosmic Crimson. And then I'm going to personally mix some Merlot. It's going to be a beautiful red and some Black Seeded Simpson. Now we're going to also broadcast sow these and use them as a cut and come again. So just have a little area here. Put the plants over the top. Sprinkle the dirt. Pat it down and then we'll keep this night area nice and wet until they until they sprout. Now for the arugula, I'm going to throw just a few seeds just in the middle here amongst my squash. These don't have a hard time overwintering at all. These don't have a hard time growing at all. So we're just going to have a little bit, just throw a few seeds in here. Whichever grow will grow. We'll just keep this area wet and see what we get. 
So that's it for my garden update and fall planting. And I'm hoping you're out in your gardens looking for open spaces and seeing if there's anything else you can plant. Because even though it feels like the season is winding down, if you want to keep harvesting, you absolutely can, even here in Utah, where you can either have a zone six winter or a zone seven winter, sometimes even zone five winters. So hopefully this video has been helpful to you. If it has been helpful, I hope you like, subscribe, share it with your friends, and go have a wonderful garden adventure.